What do you think caused Katie Magbanawa to step forward and make a deal? Why the sudden flip here? Going back to whether Georgia can um, interface with these two lawyers who were just unnecessarily in the, you know, dinner theater, justice warriors or whatever, all their behavior, bad behavior, poor behavior, in my opinion. She did, I think it was on your channel, it might have been mentor lawyers, but she did. I think you asked her what, what was the relationship like, Georgia, normally after all these big high profile cases, do you go out with the opposing counsel and have a beer and put it kind of all behind you, the fight's over? And Georgia very specifically said, not with those two. Remember that? Mm. I do. I remember. Mm. I remember that. So I think that feeds a little bit into, yes, she can do it because it's her job, but she's not going to like doing it because of the professional manner in which those two conducted themselves with all these years. Carm, I was curious uh, what you think of this, because it seems like they don't really like each other. From a professional standpoint, uh, can they overcome this to get done whatever needs to be done in terms of... 100% they can overcome it. Okay, so Fancy, you're going to continue to, to my question, I didn't I say 100% they will overcome it. They could. I said they could overcome it. You know, we don't know that she's going to be completely honest. They've done this before, going back to the professionalism of uh, Christopher DeCos and uh, Tara Kawas, or Tara, or whatever, Justice Warriors. Um, they brought Georgia and um, it was a state's attorney's investigator. Essentially, they invited Georgia and team to come right before that first trial and talk to Katie. And then she just really spun them in circles. And it, and Georgia said on the stand, the defense team brought up the fact that, hey, we invited you know you in to have you know Katie answered all your questions before trial, and that they didn't tell you what you like you know she didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. So uh, so they've done this before. So they've already they've already been hoodwinked by this team previously under a very serious, you know, taking their time out of the day to go to the jail to talk to Katie. So now it's an about face where, yeah, she's guilty. She's never going to see the light of day. So that trust has already been so broken in so many ways. I don't really have full faith that we're going to get the truth from Katie because, you know, the best indicator of the future is past behavior, right? So I don't, I just have no trust in this defense team. And I have no trust in Catherine Magbanawa, and I, don't, I have no trust that we'll get a satisfying resolution out of her turning state's evidence. Judy, do you feel the same way? Are you skeptical? A little bit, but I feel a little bit more optimistic also. I do recall Christopher Ducat saying some complimentary things about Kappelman and the prosecutors when the last trial was over, but I don't remember any exact quotes from what he said. But I, I feel that... You know, Katie's at a point of total desperation and who really wants to spend the rest of their life in prison. So, you know, that's why it, it was really, to me, it was great news to finally hear, thanks to Fancy Fiction and Angela, 